friends, welcome to Mount Sinai Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. We welcome you to our new worship in a new way for a new day on this Palm Sunday. Today we have many people involved in worship, but we're all in our different locations. So you will see some familiar faces and hear some familiar texts. Today's a little different, but we are still gathered together for worship wherever we are. We are still trusting in God's Holy Spirit. We will receive communion where we are. So feel free to grab some bread and some drink and join in whenever you might be watching this. Know that you are welcome here. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And you are loved. Let us begin our worship. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. People of God be gathered together. Like a hen with her brood beneath her wings, God has brought us together wherever we are. People of God await Christ's coming. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord of heaven. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather at your house of prayer, Turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. Amen. Please read along with us from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim the mercy of the Lord endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Those who are righteous may enter. I will give thanks to the Lord who answered me and has become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, Lord, send us now success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord and has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. The mercy of the Lord endures forever. Friends, one of my favorite parts of church is inviting the young church forward to join us up front, to have some time for stories and questions, and of course, time for prayer with them. And on Palm Sunday, we had plans for a big procession. We were going to start outside, and we were going to process up through the parking lot and in through the church, and we were going to be waving our palms and singing Hosanna to God and doing all of those wonderful things. And this year's a little different, but that's okay. God gives us new things in new ways, in new days, and so we're going to do it differently this time. So maybe, maybe you have something green like a, a favorite shirt that's green or a cloth that's green, or maybe maybe you printed out one of these palms and colored it. I colored this one. I borrowed my daughter's colored pencils. I asked her permission. She said yes. And I made this, and it's not nearly as fun. It's not nearly as fun as when we would tickle each other on the back of the neck or, you know, poke each other with them in church and all of those fun things. But that's okay. 
we're still going to rejoice today. We have a phrase in the church that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so our procession today is going to be after worship. I want you to take some time after worship. And I want you to think about some things you're thankful for. And I want you to wave, whether it's your little palm like this, or it's a cloth, or whatever it is. I want you to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And that way, we will remember that God is with us all the time. Now let's pray. I'll say the words and you repeat them after me. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day and this church and for all the love you give us. Be with us wherever we are. Help us to know your love. Help us remember all of those who are out helping other people. Nurses and doctors, first responders and firefighters, all the people working in hospitals. Be with them and with all your children. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Normally, I would send you off to Sunday school, but we're not going to do that today. However, hopefully you've been getting in the mail some packages sent to you by Miss Caroline to do some Sunday school where you are. I think this week it might be a word search, one of my all-time favorite things to do. So I hope you have fun with it and know that God loves you and I love you and the church loves you. For more than two years, Jesus had been engaged in a public ministry. He had learned much. So sensitive had grown his spirit and the living quality of his being that he seemed more and more to stand inside of life, looking out upon it as a man who gazes from a window in a room out into the yard and beyond to the distant hills. He could feel the sparrowness of the sparrow, the leprosy of the leper, the blindness of the blind, the crippleness of the cripple, and the frenzy of the mad. He had become joy, sorrow, hope, anguish, to the joyful, the sorrowful, the hopeful, the anguished. Could he feel his way into the mind and mood of those who cast the palms and flowers in his path? I wonder what was at work in the mind of Jesus of Nazareth as he jogged along on the back of the faithful donkey. ...of his childhood, feeling the sawdust between his toes in his father's shop. He may have been remembering the high holy days in the synagogue with his whole body quickened by the echo of the ram's horn. Or perhaps he was thinking of his mother, how deeply he loved her, and how he wished that there had not been laid upon him this great necessity that sent him out onto the open road to proclaim the truth, leaving her side forever. It may be that he lived all over again that high moment on the Sabbath when he was handed the scroll and unrolled it to the great passage from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. I wonder what was moving through the mind of the master as he jogged along on the back of that faithful donkey.
When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him that, and that had followed with, were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. May your word now dwell within us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. Apocalypse. That's not a word we use very often in the United Church of Christ. We usually let our more conservative siblings in Christ have that one or give it to Hollywood and let them do it with special effects and huge budgets and amazing sound effects and everything else. But apocalypse is a good word. It doesn't mean what most people think it means. It doesn't mean the death of all things or the destruction of the world. The word actually means unveiling, uncovering, lifting the cover off of something, revealing. And we're in an apocalypse right now. Because what it means is specifically it is revealing what God is doing in our midst. What God is doing in the midst of the days we are in, in the midst of the trials that we have. When Jesus rides his donkey into Jerusalem, it's not even his donkey. It's borrowed. The disciples go and they find it and they say, the Lord has need of it. And the person lets him have it, and he rides it into Jerusalem. And we can see this in several ways. We can look at it through different lenses. He might be just another self-proclaimed Messiah. They had plenty of them in those days. Plenty of people saying they were the ones who were going to restore Israel, who were going to kick out Rome, who were going to defeat the empire, who were going to bring about the revolution. We were going to make it happen. Claims to the throne of David, claims to 
be the next of Israel's rulers. He might have been seen as a prophet, which the crowd in our reading today says, this is, this is a prophet, Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Prophets come to speak a word of God. Speak a word of God, of healing, of hope, of sometimes it's of judgment. It's a word of warning. A word that might end this occupation by Rome, might bring about restoration of the people in the land, bringing children home, making pure again the temple and worship of God. As Jesus comes to Jerusalem, we know the events that are about to unfold. He will threaten business as usual in the temple, business as usual in the market, business as usual in politics, in militarism, in economics, in all the ways we use power over one another as a human family. He will gather with his friends in the midst of this for a meal, remembering the saving acts of God for people oppressed under Pharaoh, for people in the wilderness, for people in the need of a new covenant. He gathers for a Seder meal, as we will in our own symbolic ways this Thursday, Maundy Thursday. A day that gets its name not from Monday Thursday, as I thought for many years. It's Maundy, and it comes from the same root as mandate, commandment. A new commandment to love one another, even as Jesus loves us. He will gather with his friends. And they will eat this meal and he will institute a new thing. We call it Holy Communion. And even in that meal, there will be one who will betray him. One who will deny him. Even his closest followers didn't fully trust. And we understand that. We have trouble. There are days when it's hard to trust. There are days when it's difficult to remember. He'll be betrayed by one of his own who can't quite break out, can't quite break orbit of the ways of the world, doesn't quite get this new thing that Jesus is doing. And because he is offering a vision of God different from the religious authorities, he will be called a blasphemer by those around the temple. And he'll be handed over to the political and military authorities, those who have the ability to pass judgment and to execute. He'll be branded as an outlaw, tried as a traitor to Rome, tortured and killed by the state because they cannot stand any, legitimate, any legitimacy, any other crown, any other power than their own. This is the apocalypse Jesus brings. This is what he reveals. He reveals that the world is violent. He reveals that the systems that we often look to for security do not keep us safe. That they often are violent themselves. He reveals that those in power do not seek the well-being of the people or the protection of creation. They seek their own power. They seek to secure their own means. He reveals the religious authorities who make claims on God's behalf, claims like it's okay to gather in church during a pandemic because God will protect us, or it's okay to exclude people whom Jesus loves just because they're different from us. He reveals the lie that is behind those. Those are not God's claims. Jesus reveals things the way our current pandemic reveals them. He reveals what society is and what society does. Yes, I just licked my fingers to turn a page, but I'm at home. I'm not out in public. Touching one's face is okay because I've washed my hands. William Barber III, minister and one of the leaders of the Poor People's Campaign, he, he writes, epidemics emerge along the fissures of our society, reflecting not only the biology of the infectious agent, but patterns of marginalization, exclusion, and discrimination. We are seeing that our society is only as healthy as our sickest person, 
Our country is only as secure as the least secure homeless family, low-wage worker, indebted student, or uninsured person. He continues, many of the workers who have been deemed essential and mandated to work are those being paid the lowest wages with the least worker protections. It has been revealed that we are social creatures. Even the most hermit-like of us longs for public gatherings, longs for hugging one another again. And in that, our health is also communal. Truly, we are our brother's keeper when it comes to a pandemic. Because we try to stay quarantined. We try to self-isolate for the sake of those around us. Our system is broken. We're seeing that right now. From the lies told in the halls of power, to the ways we dismantled the pandemic response, and the social safety nets that, however imperfectly they were designed, they were there to protect the least of these in our midst. The ways people are only a paycheck or two away from disaster. The ways that science is currently being treated as more of a liability than an asset. So people are still gathering in parks here in our area. People are still gathering despite the need to stay home to stay separated for the sake of health. But Jesus reveals more than this. Jesus reveals more than the problems. Jesus reveals that love wins. Jesus rides in not on a chariot, not on a war horse like a conquering hero, like a general of Rome. Jesus rides in on a donkey, an image that goes back to the kings of Israel, but the image of a servant king, the image of a humble king, the image of one who leads by serving others. Jesus comes in and exposes the system for what it is. And the system doesn't like it. And the system kills him. But that does not have the last word. The last word belongs to love. The last word belongs to God. Now, I'm getting ahead of ourselves. That's a week from now. We have a long holy week ahead of us. And we will be looking at this story. We will be seeing our places in it throughout this week. We will have special times of worship on Thursday. Maundy Thursday. New Commandment Thursday. Love one another as I have loved you. We will have special times of worship on Friday. Good Friday. I had to explain that to a friend who had no church background. Why is it Good Friday when Jesus is crucified? And the answer is Good Friday comes from an older expression. God's Friday. This is in God's hands now. Holy Saturday, where we wait, we wait. Jesus is in the tomb and we feel distant. It feels like we've been in Holy Saturday a long time now. And Easter Sunday. Some people are saying we need to wait till we get back together to celebrate Easter. Well, we're going to celebrate when we get back together. We're going to throw a party. We're going to we're going to have all the hugs and the high fives and the handshakes and everything else. But we're also going to celebrate Easter where we are. Because Jesus doesn't care. Jesus doesn't care what the situation is. Resurrection is real because Jesus cares. Yes, I gave you the paradox. Jesus doesn't care about the state of the world because Jesus loves us so much. The love is greater than the state of the world. That's what's being revealed. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Friends, I invite you to take a moment now, offer your prayers in silence. We'll take a few moments. You can say them where you are. You can pray them silently. Let us offer our prayers. Gracious and holy God, we gather on this paradoxical Palm Sunday, the day of processions where we are all at home, the day of celebrations when we are all still a little worried, the day of rejoicing when we are all tired, and yet you are with us. We ask your presence with our first responders, with our health care people, from those who sweep and clean the floors to those performing surgeries and everyone in between. For when we're in a pandemic, they are all important. And in this time, we pray for all of our people, the ones we love, the ones who are nearby and the ones who are distant, the ones we've been cooped up in with for a little too long and those we long to see. We pray for our leadership in our townships in our county, our state, our country, our world. Help us move beyond small visions and into a human vision, a vision of humanity in which we are each siblings, your children. Bless us, Lord, with what we need for these days. I don't pretend to know what all that is but I do know we are in need. Bless us, Lord, with unexpected graces, with ways that remind us who we are and whose we are. We are your children and we belong to you. So help us to live with one another, love one another, be a beloved community, in new ways for these new days. All this we pray in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught, using the words often printed in the bulletin or the words closest to our hearts. The prayer that begins, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, for our offering today, I, I want to celebrate something. I want to celebrate the fact that we were we received a huge donation for the food pantry. A couple thousand dollars. This goes a long way to helping out those in need. We're still trying to practice good social distancing. We're still trying to make sure we take care of the people who are helping out. But I am so grateful that in the midst of this difficult pandemic, people are stepping up, offering themselves on behalf of others. What a wonderful thing. And there are other ways to offer ourselves. We can offer our prayers. We can offer phone calls. We can offer cards. We can email or text or FaceTime or however we do it to check in on folks. We offer ourselves because life is a gift every single day. And we've received this gift. Thanks be to God. And so if you wish to make an offering to the church, you may do so on the, face, on the, the website. There is a donate button. You may mail a check to the church. Someday soon, I don't know when, someday soon we will gather and we'll have plates you can put it in. Until that day, we continue to be the church wherever we are, whenever we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we do communion where we are, as we are, whenever it is that you are join us in worship through this video. We do communion with whatever bread you may have, with whatever drink you may have. We are together, even as we are separated. We are together in God's Holy Spirit. We are together as the church, even though we're in homes all over the place. The earliest church how they gathered, they met in homes. They dedicated themselves to prayer and to the apostles' teaching and to the breaking of bread. They ate together. They shared communion together. And so we do that as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this day we remember all of your saving acts. We remember the graces that have brought us from generation to generation to this time and place, and we give thanks for the faith we have inherited. We ask your blessing upon the church, gathered and scattered. We ask your blessing upon all of those who come to the table this day. We remember the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In like manner, after the supper, he took the cup. And again, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. Take and drink. Drink from this, all of you. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And so we gather where we are with simple elements, bread and cup. We ask your blessing. Come, Spirit, come. Make yourself known to us in this meal. Make your presence truly known with us. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. Take and eat. The cup of the new covenant, poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of thanksgiving. 
we give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and bring us to your Easter in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, the opportunities to serve are still with us. Take care of yourselves. Maintain social distance, but spiritual closeness. Wash your hands. If you go out, wear a mask. If you don't have one, give the church office a call. We have people sewing them. We can find you one. Take care of one another. Check in on your neighbors. If you're one of those that gets checked in on, thank them. And maybe call a friend. See if they're doing okay. And know that God's love is with us now and in the days ahead until we are all together again. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us, be gracious unto us, lift up God's countenance upon us and grant us always God's peace. Amen and amen.